This program is brought to you in part by SalCal Real Estate Connections. Yes, we're back again, Mr. Moon. Your no, your Christmas party annual. This is 2017. Yes, we're back again, and uh, the snow is uh, not bad because it didn't snow only before the party, but we still got to shovel it and keep these guys so they keep not slipping on the ground. Oh, I've been to a few parties here where we see this white stuff, and it's not easy. No, it's not because uh, I sand it twice and and shovel by hand instead of getting the plow because there wasn't enough snow, but enough to make you fall. So we got that all straightened out, and now the party's starting, and we're having fun. Well, let me tell you, I have to give a lot of credit to a lot of people, and Kathy is right on the top of the list. Well, my wife's a working alcoholic. She don't drink, but she sure works a lot, and she sure likes to holler at me anyways and make sure I do it right. You know, Don, I've been here, you know, every, I don't know how many years in a row now, but it just doesn't get old. You know, when you see these guys, it's like being going back home. Yes, it is. It's like it's like a pit road at Plainville Stadium. All new faces that we've seen years ago, and it's like new race cars being built. Yeah. It's just like being in the end of the day. I, hope, I wish it would never end, I'll tell you. No, I wish it was like this all the time, like the old cowboys were the old race car drivers. Now, we lost a few people along the way this past few months. Yeah, we lost Lombardo. We lost a few other ones. Uh, it's it's a shame because uh, we're all getting up there in age, and we don't like to see people pass on or whatever you want to call it. We like to see them stay young and keep going and do the same thing over and over. Who knows? Maybe someday there will be a racetrack up there. Yeah, well, Flimpke and John Spade is up there waiting for Don Moon to come to get in the race cars if they don't fit, but I'd like to get in there and wheel it well a couple of times. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'll tell you, what do you, what do you think of the state of racing right now? What goes what, what is going on? I love racing, but in the last few years, what I see with these guys spend and how they build the cars and what they buy, there's no way that I go out there. The first thing, I don't like to be told what I'm done, that i got to do to the race car and how to build it and what to spend. That's the first thing. And uh, today, you got to buy everything, and they tell you what motor to run, what to bring, and what to do. And uh, that doesn't go with me. Yeah, it's a lot different today, I tell you. In the day, the junkyard was our best friend. Right. Oh, he was a real friend of mine. I used to take all the parts, rebuild them, and, and put them on the car, and the thing would fly. I could remember days at Plainville Stadium going out in the parking lot, taking parts off of cars out there. Yeah, but don't tell nobody because I took a lot of parts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just, boy, what an era that was. I'll tell you, it's just hard to believe that everything went on back then, you know. Yeah, we used to tow with a tow bar. Then we went. Then we got it. Finally, got a trailer, and everything was different. Things was just climbing right away. I mean, everything was turning into money, and we were still racing after the seventies and the eighties. It really started to disappear. Yeah. It's all together a different ball game. You know, you bring up that you know the trailers and this and that. I can remember with JoJo using a furniture truck. Hey, put the stock car inside an old furniture truck. And then unload it at the sta at the Plano Stadium. Oh yeah, I've seen a lot of that. They they had a place in the back. We we drive the truck on a platform, and drive it onto the truck, then back up to the thing down the back of Plano yeah. and drive it off. Yeah. They didn't have no trailers and stuff like that. Whatever they could borrow, they used. I can't remember. I, I'll tell you a story that Skip Ziegler told me that to this day I'll just never forget. Wrecked the car, had to go home and get a refrigerator dolly. Put it on the right front of the car and drag it home to, to, to Thomaston on the refrigerator dolly. How's that? I seen it happening because they got it went all the way to Terrorville with it. Yeah. With the dolly and it wore out the wheels. <laughs> yeah. You expect a lot of people here today, Don? Uh, the way it looks right now, I think they're all still sleeping because of the snow and stuff. They might be still. Some might be working, but I expect people being about two o'clock, three o'clock will be strike up the band. Oh, yeah. I, I could tell. They're, they're drifting in, and yeah. the, it just, like I said, you know, I just look so much, so forward to this, to seeing these guys. They're just special people. Yeah. They're all special because uh, they're either younger than me or older than me, but they're all special people, and I love to see them, and I, I like to throw this event down because uh, it's a happy thing. Absolutely, buddy. 
Well, I don't want to tie you up too much further because I know you you got to be greeting people and make sure everything's going smooth. And I want to thank you again for, you know, inviting us to come, number one. And number two, we always have a great time here, Don. And give that wife of yours, that cat, give her a big hug for us, okay? Well, I like you guys to come because you make the show. You, you show it on TV so everybody knows what's going on at Don Moon's Christmas party. And I enjoy seeing you guys. Very good, buddy. Well, God, really. That. And you're a lucky man. And we I just hope we do this till we're 100 years old. I hope so because I want to keep on going. Uh, I can't do what I want to do, but uh, I can do quite a bit still. But uh, we just got to keep on going. That's it, buddy. Let me let you go. I know you're busy. Yeah. And thank you again. All right. You be good. Thank you. Take care. Yes, we got a legend from the past, John Steiger. I hear when we were kids, you knew all the secrets that Ed Flinkley Sr. taught you. Is that correct? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep, he was a good teacher. <laughs> yeah, you had a good mentor there, didn't you? Oh, yeah. Yep, we did good. Yep, we can't complain. Now, t now tell me, what was your favorite place to race? Uh, I think Utica, Rome. We raced all over, you know. We didn't have no trouble nowhere, you know. Yeah, we did good everywhere we went, you know. It's we 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 had a little head start on some of them. <laughs> well, let me tell you, in the day, that Flimke, he was just unbelievable, you know. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. He uh, you had to do his way, and he'd make it go. Make it go. Oh, yeah, and we didn't have the best of stuff. I mean, we, we had no. junk. I mean, I mean, but back then, you didn't have the regulations, and no, no, we didn't have the rules. car had to weigh this. And no, the, no. The, no, we had the lightest car out there I mean, to start with. I'm not kidding. His cars were light because, yeah. the, and that's what that was the secret. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's, uh, yep. Yeah. And, you know, Eddie knew, you know, he knew the tracks. I mean, yeah. he knew who was, who was running. Who he had to pass, that's it. It's. I have to say it, boy, when it comes to modified racing, he's the king. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he did good. I can't complain, you know. But you had to do it his way. If yes, he you did. put two turns in this stride, you better do it, because if you don't, you ain't finishing the race. He'll pull it in. So whether you rattle the wrench and make it like you turned it, away he went. I mean, no, he was good, you know, yeah. you know, and he'd 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 outfox you, you know. Oh, you know yeah. I'll tell you, I used to feel sorry for Junior, because everyone always compared Flinky Junior to the father, I and mean, it really wasn't fair. No, 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 he never he never was even close. I don't know why, but yeah. no, no. Well, yeah. his, his game was building a car. Yeah, well, that's it. You know, he did good on a car, but, you know, really ain't nobody using him. You know, I don't know, you know. Well, that, that comes and goes. Yeah, well, that's it. Yeah. yeah, like I say, you know, we built all our own, and now you just get on the phone, give them your credit card, yep. and go pick it up, go and it's it done. Up. <laughs> and if it's a problem, well, just bolt, bolt this on, unbolt this. You don't even need a welder no more, you know. I mean, <laughs> we used to do everything. Made the whole car, and motors. I mean, as long as the motor started, made noise, we're racing. We didn't know how much horsepower. You know, you know people tell me that on, on, on the, what's the east, not, what's that street? Flimke used to drive up and down the street, and that's why there's all the stop signs. Was it East Street? Was that the street? Uh, no, I don't remember. I don't remember what the name of the street was. Uh, because he worked for the, the milk company. Yeah. We used uh, to take the stock cars right down right down a regular street just oh, to yeah, dry them out. Yeah, in our days, yeah. You know, test it out, make sure it's got brakes and uh, the yeah. gas pedal's working. And, you know. Oh, yeah. No? Oh, yeah. In, in our days, we got away with a lot of stuff. Now, tell me, John, how long did you race? You know, years. How many years did you race? I'm saying like 20, maybe. 20. Yep. Did it wear you out? No. Nah, wow. Well, once they start coming with these fancy motors, I says, no way. Yeah. I can't spend that kind of money. Can you imagine today? For the same amount of money to win. You, you, you know? I mean, and actually now, the payoffs are just double. Yeah. But the cars, oh I mean, <laughs> they got to have $100,000 in them. You got to have a bank account. 
unreal. And look at the the car haulers they got now. I mean, we had a trailer, yeah, <laughs> and that's it. Was you had a trailer? Never mind. That's it. Yeah, that's it. You know, and now, right? They look like they're Grand National cars, and oh, it's a and, different deal. Yeah, and like I say, all the cars are the same. The only thing is different is the paint. And anybody can drive these things now. I mean, you know, they get the power steering, you know, with the fancy seats. I mean, in our days, if the driver hit the wall, he either had a broken leg or an arm. Now, you hit the wall, well, you got another car for me? Yeah. You know? Where's the backup? Yeah, I'm ready to go again. And it is, you know, it's safety. You know, and we had some things. I mean, roll bars, we cheated. You know? oh, I won't even talk about that. Yeah, I know, everything, you know. Yeah. I mean, we cheated a little, you know. And, and they're still cheating now. They oh, just yeah. ain't getting caught, you know. Oh, yeah. it's, they it's got the fence. It's tough I now. Know. Well, they got so many rules now. Right, I mean. Yeah. Do you think the only rules we had, as long as the exhaust went past the driver, fire extinguisher, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and that's about it. So different. Yeah, and now, like I say, you know, everything is different. Special weights for this, offsets this, and oh, yeah, no, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, it's uh, it's a whole new world, you know. Well, I want to thank you for having a word with us, and uh, I'll tell you, it's always a pleasure to see you. And yeah. like I was telling Don Moon, I hope we do this till we're a hundred. Yeah, I know. Well, <laughs> I'm trying to count back. <laughs> you know, it ain't working. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, no. buddy. Okay, all right. Thank Very you. Yep. And, you know, when you get... And, yes, once again, Bill, we yeah. get together again. Yes, we do. Huh? It's good. It's good to be here. And I'll tell you, it wouldn't be right if we came to this party and I didn't see you. No, nah, I'll be here. You know, Billy, you, you, you're you just a legend in your time. That's all I could say. Well, uh, everybody thinks that, but... I'm just a regular guy. That's all. You were part of an elite group, let me tell you. Oh, yeah. We had some great drivers in them days. And uh, good drivers. You know, today, I don't know. I just lost interest in racing for some reason. Well, it's a different environment completely. Yeah, that's true. Everything has uh, changed 100%. I don't get around as much as I used to because uh, I have it health-wise. But everything is, seems to be on the right road right now. So. Yeah, that's great, you know. I remember George, too, your brother George. huh? Yep. He, he used to know how to set the car up just by watching you out there, seeing you what you were doing. Yeah, he uh, paid attention. He knew how I drove. And he knew what he had to do to the car to make it handle. And uh, he did a great job. He was good. Oh, yeah, he was special, let me tell you. Yeah. We hit it off right, you know. I mean, over the years, when I think, Sharky's car. Remember Sharky's car? Sure, the 44 I had. Oh yeah. Huh? And I won a lot of races at West Haven, Plainville. Yeah, I did very good in that car. Oh, yeah. One thing I have to say, Bill, you always had the women, too. They were always, every, everywhere I went and you were there, boy, them women would be right at that fence. Huh? <laughs> yeah. The, the women used to, I used to get in trouble with my wife because they used to push her away from me. And, uh, and she says, I'm getting tired of this. Uh-oh. I said, well, you know, what are you going to do? You know, when you're in the eyes of the public, you know, you got to, you know, you got to treat them right. And that's what I did. I, I, I didn't. You were a fan favorite, let me tell you. Yeah, I did. I had a lot of fans. And I had a fan club at one time, which it was over 500 members in it. And uh, that was good. You know, that, that tells you how popular you were, Billy, really. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, if you went to Riverside in uh, my days in the 60s, you would see all red jackets. Uh, every one of them was 43 on the back. Yeah, 
you had a following without a doubt. You know? Yeah, there was. I had a lot of good fans. I had a, I met a lot of good people in that racing. You know, Billy, one thing I never talked to you about is I used to, I come from drag racing mostly, and I drag raced with George's kid, George Jr. Yeah, George was a good driver. He was a fantastic kid, I'll tell you. Yep, and uh, my brother built that car and a motor for that Mustang. He had yeah. two Mustangs, yeah. and they were very good. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I think he broke the eight-second mark with that Mustang. Oh yeah, that thing they had the Nova. Was a Nova supercharger? Yep. Yeah, he had that. Yeah, and that was uh, Andy Granatelli's sons. Yeah, there was a tie. There was a tie together there. Yeah. No, oh, there was. He was. He he was down the house a lot, down the garage. He can't he used to come here. Yeah. Yeah, it was good. I used to tease him. I say, "You're almost as good looking as your uncle Billy." You know? <laughs> yeah, no, no, he's he a good-looking he kid, let me yeah. tell you. Yeah, yeah, he looked like uh, that uh, movie actor there. Uh, Paul Newman? No, no. Uh, he had blue eyes, I know. Yeah, he had blue eyes, and he was a good looker, yeah. I know, I used to tease him all the time, I tell you. Yeah, he had, uh, he had a lot of fans, too, a lot of... It was a womanizer. Back in the day, the Mustang movement was something special. Yeah. I want to tell you. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I didn't. Uh, I didn't do to. I didn't do no drag racing. But I went with them a couple times. I went to uh, Lebanon Valley. I went to down in uh, Virginia and New Jersey. We went. Oh, I went Atco, all over. Oh, right, Atco, yeah. New Jersey. Yeah, Acton. Yeah, and then uh, we used to go to Motorsport Nationals in Maple Grove, Pennsylvania. Yeah, well, I never been to the Pennsylvania uh, meets, but I went to. Uh, uh, I can't think now. English Town. I've been to English Town with them, <laughs> but now I'm talking about down in Kentucky. You know, we went to where the horse racing is. They they brought me down by the Catamount. Oh, is that right? You know, uh, stables, mm -hmm. and showed me all around there. Yeah, I mean, he went all over the country. I'll tell you. Yeah, he was good. He was good. Yeah, it's too bad that. Yeah, it's too bad. He was passing away, but he was a great, great kid. I'll tell you. He was a good mechanic. Him, he learned everything from my brother. My brother was so good, I'll tell you. He used to be able to touch a car with his hand and tell you what was wrong with it. Okay. The way it was running. Whether it had vibrations. Yep. He knew he knew everything about cars. Yeah. Well, what do you think of today here with all these people again here, huh? No, this is great. No, I I wouldn't miss this. For the world, you know, a lot of drivers and mechanics and different people that are in the racing from here. They come every year, and I wouldn't miss it for the world. Well, I know. I, well, yeah, I was telling Don, I said, you know, we look so much, look so much forward to come here to see everybody. It ju it's just special. Yeah, oh, yeah. This is this is a special thing. I don't know how he does it because uh, I used to run some, you know, reunions for West Haven Speedway, and I know what it was to set it up and do it. But uh, I don't know how he does it alone. I couldn't do it alone. Let me tell you, Kathy plays a bigger role. Yes, I'm sure. Yeah. Have to give her a lot of credit. Yeah, 100 percent. Yeah, number one for putting up with him. Number one. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, he's a good guy, though. Yeah, he is. Don is a good guy. He is. Well, I don't want to tie you up. There's a lot of reunions out there. I know there's a lot of people waiting to shake your hand and say hello, Billy. But as usual, I just love talking with you. You're just a great person. Good. I'm glad to be here. and I wish everybody a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. 
Amen. Don't forget, I want to meet your daughter, okay? Oh, yeah, I brought my daughter here. First time she wanted to come. She used to come to the races when they were young and everything. But uh, now she has uh, her own home and everything in Waterbury. I picked her up. She said, pick me up. I want to come to, the, to this uh, reunion. I said, good, I'll take you. And I did. We're looking I forward. Her. I'm looking forward to meeting her. Yeah, she's a good kid. Yeah, she is. All right, Billy, thank you. And as usual, you're always on your game, buddy. I'm just happy to be here. Okay, another year, right, buddy? That's it. Okay. Yes, once again, we got from Radio Fame, Gary Danko, and the Starter Fame. Which one do you prefer? Yeah, just a, a race fan. Um, you know, love racing, but uh, of course, love the, doing the radio show as well. I have to say, you know, you enjoy yourself. No matter where you are, you just enjoy what you do. Yeah, absolutely. You know, my brother and I, and I've told you many times before, you know, grew up going to Plainville Stadium, watching racing. My brother's on the riding side. I got on the announcing side and uh, have fun with that. And, you know, you got to have fun in what you're doing. And, of course, I used to announce at a lot of the local short tracks. And, you know, I kind of tapered off and uh, still go to a lot of races, but basically go when I want. But I love doing my, my radio show, Speedway and Army Port Radio. Uh, you know, we're first April in, or the first Monday in April, and we go to the first Monday in November every Monday night. Yeah, you do. I'll tell you, you do a very good job. And your brother, too, I have to tell you. I'm Brian East. I mean, he's very interesting to talk to and, and to read his article. He's very good. Oh, yeah. Been around a long, long time and, you know, uh, started covering the, the the Modified Tour back in 1985 when the Modified Tour had just started. And, uh, you know, he enjoys, uh, you know, going to races and, 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 and the writing end of it. I'll tell you, that when we come here, I mean, it's like coming home, isn't it? Yeah, Don and his wife, Kathy, they always do a great job with the, the, the Christmas party here and, uh you enjoy coming out. You're relaxed. You know, you get to see a lot of people that sometimes you don't get to see uh, during the during the racing season. And, you know, coming here, it's a, it's always a who's who. Well, who's going to be here at the Christmas party? It's like a guessing game. Who's going to show up this year? I mean, so far, I mean, you know, Ray Miller's here today, Billy Greco here, John Jerish, uh, and the list goes on and on of uh, people, the drivers and uh, car owners. Uh, Roland Sears here, Roger Sally's here, so... So it's always a, a fun time. Now, I got to ask you a question. Yes. How do you equate to what's going on racing today back to when we, we were used to things? I'll put it that way. Well, I mean, the dynamics of short track racing has definitely changed. There's no, there's no doubt about it. I mean, um, there's so many, there's a lot of things that uh, other people are interested in. Not that they're not interested in racing, but it's not a priority. Back when I was a kid, and along with my brother and others, I mean, you know, racing, you couldn't wait to go to the races every Saturday night, uh, Plainville Stadium, Riverside Park, or wherever your your track choice was. But um, the dynamics of short track racing has certainly changed, not only from the racing end of it, but it's also changed from a fan and even covering the sport of auto racing. And there's, and there's many reasons why and we'd, we'd be here all day if we were to get into all the... All we could have a debate about that. Absolutely. Yeah, we certainly could. Yes, yeah. Well, I have to say, it's just a great thing to be able to come here and see all these great people, isn't it? Absolutely. And like I said, Don and his wife, Kathy, they do a great job. And everybody that uh, comes out to these Christmas parties. And, um, and of course, you're working today, but you're still enjoying yourself. Let me tell you, we do, we do this because we love it. We actually love it. I'll tell you. you know, that was the question about it. No, you're you're exactly right, and uh, you do a great job as well. Um, you know, covering uh, motorsports and everything else that uh, that you do, and uh, you know we have a we have a fun time. Yeah, we don't call it work; we call it enjoyment. A absolutely, because we all have full time jobs that we that we do. Absolutely. Well, I want to thank you, Gary. As normal, you're, as usual, you're right on your game, and I hope we could get up and do another radio show. Absolutely. Let's uh, make plans right now for 2018 to to uh, come back up uh, to the studio, and uh, uh, we'll uh, we'll definitely have room for you in the studio, and come on in, and we'll have fun. Absolutely. Well, thank you. Have fun today, and 
We'll have to get Brian in here. You have a word with him. Okay. Thanks, guys. Very good, buddy. And, yes, we got the other half of the Danko family. Brian, you're the writer, buddy. Am I thinking right? You are right. You are right. Yeah. 40, uh, 42 years covering the Modifieds. Wow. That's a long time. Yeah. That's almost as old as Don Moon. Yeah, well, no, I think Don was uh, Don was my childhood hero. Oh, well, he was. Yeah. Hey, I can remember the, the, the cars he had there, and the novice cars. Oh boy, in the beginning, it was interesting. Well, that was all. That was I always remember the modified cars oh, yeah. and how meticulous Don's cars always were. Every week, regardless if he got into a wreck or somebody got into him, every week you come back the following week, the car was meticulous. He always did a good job. Yep. Yep. Now tell me, Brian, you started doing this writing way back in the day. Now, who would you do that for? Was it a local newspaper? Yeah, New Britain Herald, uh, which your sister works for. Yep. And uh, did it for them, you know, because there was no coverage. And I said, well, we got to have modified coverage here. You got Plainville Stadium just down the road. I said, you know, you you got to have this. So uh, that's how I got into it. Little did I know, forty some odd years later, I'd still be into it. Now you're still you're still doing the tour, right? Still cover the modified tour, yeah. And uh, got back into it more this year than I have. Um, I had sort of backed out of it after 2007 but uh, would always still cover five six races a year but this year was 10 races and next year looks like it'll be at least 10 uh, and I just love the modifieds let's, let's let the viewers know that where they where could they read your articles well I write for area auto racing news which is a, a trade paper out of New Jersey um, they offer subscriptions. I'm not quite sure what the year is. I think it's $40 for like 52 weeks a year. Uh, and um, they cover everything. Uh, my columns are in there. We have now, before I was the only modified writer they had. Now we have like four or five guys who cover the modifieds. So you don't only get my looks or opinion or my race story, but now you're getting Kyle Souza and you're getting Kevin Rice and you're getting Lenny Sammons. So you get a more different um, perspective of the same race. Boy, I'll tell you, that there's a sport there that's taken some crazy changes, huh? Yeah, yeah, not as bad as the uh, NASCAR Monster Cup or whatever that's called now. I mean, at least the Modifieds are still the Modifieds. Drew great crowds this year. I mean, the Modified Tour, Stafford, Thompson, all had tremendous crowds. Seekonk had tremendous crowds. New Hampshire... Uh, even though the cup race was down, the modified still had good, uh, you know, 30, maybe 35,000. So the modified tour and modified racing is strong in general. Oh, it is. You've got a real good following. Now tell me, how does it feel to be back here once again? It has been good to me, and hopefully I've been good to them. Absolutely. Well, I want to thank you, Brian. As usual, you're right on your game, and we're going to have to get together and Get on that radio show with your brother. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you, buddy. You're welcome. As usual, as time flies, when you're having fun, we give you a shot of all the people that were in attendance. And, boy, let me tell you, it was just an outstanding day here. And please tune in again to Racing Action Today.